It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their families. Now here's your host, Ken Robbins. Welcome to Veterans Issues. Appreciate you tuning in this week. Today's guest is the director of the Birmingham VAMC, the VA Medical Center, and the public affairs director is Thomas Smith and Jeff Hester. You stay here. I've got some good news for you. you stay where you are and get you a pen now. Got to have it. Welcome back to Veterans Issues, Ken Rollins. We, today we've got the director of the Birmingham VA Hospital and the public affairs director, and uh, they've been on here before, but we've been on quite a while. We need to find out what's been going on there. Welcome to the show, Jeff Hester. Did get you there. <laughs> and Thomas Smith, I'm going to call you Tom. Ken. Tom is I, perfectly I all right, Ken. <laughs> if I can call you Ken. <laughs> there you go. If I was prisoner 17628, you'd call me 17. <laughs> all right, well, we've... Uh, it's been a while since you've been back down here. It We've is. been trying to put this together for a while, but you went over to the Vision 7 over. In, where, I did. Where was that located? That's actually in Atlanta in Duluth, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, for nine months, I was the acting uh, or interim network director for the Southeast VA Boy, that region. that must have yeah. been fun. It was a lot of fun, especially driving back and forth. You know how much fun that oh, could be. Oh, you still you still lived here? Uh, I actually lived here. Came home on the weekends, but uh, spent all week up there, and uh, actually gave me a wonderful opportunity to uh, to actually work with our other uh, seven mm -hmm. medical centers in the uh, southeast region: South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. Uh, and a great opportunity. I, I, I would it. think that you'd be able to see the uh, challenges you're facing. Overall, are the same but different, wouldn't you? A absolutely, and you know what? Uh, I learned a lot about uh, in the other medical centers some of the best practices that they did, and could br bring them back to Birmingham. And I was able to share with them some of the great things that our folks do at uh, Birmingham as well. Yeah. I serve on a region board with the Vietnam veterans, and I deal with people in Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, and Puerto Rico. And I guarantee you. They are the same, but they are so much difference between the borderlines. They all have their own per, per, uh, personality. You're absolutely right. Some do, some do ceremonies different, and some do uh, benefits, so to speak. And then you have your volunteers, and you got your doers, and you got your talkers. Within every one of those, I find that there's like five people that make everything work out of the hundreds that <laughs> show up. You know what absolutely. I mean? Uh, We've got some great staff out there, uh, particularly, of course, at the Birmingham VA Medical mm -hmm. Center, but our other facilities have some great staff. That's one of the best things about it, was getting to know the staff, those frontline workers, and how dedicated and committed they are to taking care of our veterans. Jeff would probably remember this, that when uh, Rika lewis Payton, your before you, mm -hmm. was on the show, uh, while it was during the break, she got a phone call that Birmingham VA had just been selected, what is a Vision 7, out of the whole states, all the states. It's been like number one in all of them it was correct yeah, yeah. We, yeah we were listed as one of the best medical centers in the country at the time mm -hmm. we were in the top 10 and we were noted for our performance and the great things we do for our veterans so Rika was very proud of that oh yeah how yeah. long have you been over there Jeff? Uh, been over there 25 years so uh -huh. and I just wanted to say thank you for your service today Ken I don't get to do that often <laughs> but we uh, had a big celebration at the VA Medical Center last uh, week mm -hmm. uh, for our 50th anniversary for Vietnam veterans and just to see many of the veterans come out that were Vietnam veterans that never got recognized, you know, several of them shed tears. We had great media coverage. Uh, the Chapter 416 out of Birmingham yeah. did it, but we had Vietnam veterans from around the state. It was great to see those guys come back, get pinned with a pin for their recognition of being welcomed yeah. back to home. And it really touched a lot and I think healed a lot of open wounds for our Vietnam veterans. So, you know, yeah. again, appreciate your service and what you do for our veterans in the state of Alabama. Thank you for saying that. And, and it's a mutual thing because I, I go back, I, I've been using that VA over there since the 60s, late 60s, and I've seen the, tra the tra changes and all the changes have been for the good. I can mm -hmm. say that, that it, it wasn't always what it is today. Thank goodness that we got people who had thinking out of the box and done some things over the years. And I know several of the directors have been over there, but I, I just 
some of the people that work over there now, and I hear things behind your back, and they all they all good. Eh? Something you're doing something right over there in Birmingham. Well, I'll tell you what, Ken. That that uh, staff over there, they make it easy. They do because yeah. that is a great staff. Uh, when I first actually when I was interviewing for this job, I found out a little bit about the staff here, and I found out how committed and engaged they are with taking care of veterans. How they do truly love taking care of the veterans uh, in, yeah. in the Birmingham area and all over North Alabama, and so they make it easy. They they do a wonderful job. Very professional. Uh, very technical, very skilled, very talented, but also very caring. You know, uh, Jeff, you appreciate this, but uh, one of the names that sticks with me that that uh, for I don't know twenty plus years is Geneva. Mm -hmm. That woman. She is she is a woman of dedication. You, you Geneva Robinson is a patient advocate, and she has been taking care of veterans there at that medical center for forty five yep. years. And you know, she says she does not want to leave because she loves the veterans, yeah. and she has babied veterans. And some of these veterans are 70 years old, and she's still babying some <laughs> of the ones it, that are 80 and 90. I, I, I mean, so you know, she's like a mother of uh, you know yeah. the a patient advocate. You're, anyway, you're she's a great her. lady. You're around her more than I am, and I just wondered if this is what drives this person. What drives somebody that she just she just looks like she gets more out of helping. Than she puts into it. I mean, I just yeah. that's just the impression I have of her. Well, she's a true Christian lady, and she loves veterans, and she loves what she does for her country. And like I said, she has really raised these people, the veterans, over the years, and they come to Geneva for everything. And, and it don't and matter what it's for—a prescription while we're, refill. While we're talking or, about employees, I got to talk about one of yours, Davida. What's her last name? Up in the prosthetic. Uh, the, the lady I told you about, Davida, she, Davida, I think it is, she has uh, went above and beyond. Well, you know, whether we get her name right or whatever, you know who I'm talking about. Right. But, but she just went above and beyond. I saw tears come in her eyes. She was talking about prosthetics, Tom, and she was talking about, uh, I give people leg braces, and I give people these stumps, and I do this. She said, but she's telling me a story about a fellow that got his hand for the first time. He didn't have a hand. They put him a prosthetic hand on there. Mm -hmm. And so they was going down somewhere. She had to go with him somewhere down on the elevator. And she was going to push the button and he even docked her hand out of the way. He wanted to use that <laughs> hand. And she, she got teary-eyed and had me in tears telling me about this because this was mm -hmm. her job. But it was more than a job. Exactly. And we, there were several people there that I could name that y'all know some of, but they saw the same thing and said, mm -hmm. what, a, what a great thing to have people work for a VA that care as much as she was crying telling us that that man just touched that button with his finger for the first time and what she got out of it you know that's her payoff she I did. think that's the most rewarding thing for us to, to hear is uh, when a veteran tells us that our VA saved their life yeah. or at least changed their life for, for just uh, eons better uh, it's just it's very touching for us well you've transitioned to take care of the women's clinic and all this thing we'll talk about the new place here in a minute but but uh, in this first segment, I want to make sure we get this in here. Y'all done a transplant over there for a kidney transplant. We have. We uh, were certified last year in 2015 as a renal transplant uh, organization in the VA. We're the seventh within the country, so there aren't that many. Uh, and so we're now kind of a, a regional trans kidney transplant center for the VA. Uh, a lot of work went into that, uh, a lot of uh, affiliation and uh, coordination with UAB, University of Alabama Medical uh, over there, and they were instrumental in helping us stand this up. But uh, we did uh, get certified, uh, and everything was in place by December, and we did our first kidney transplant in January, and it was very successful. A uh, veteran from over in the Augusta area came in, got it done, and he was up on his uh, up in his chair uh, watching Rawhide when I went by to see him uh, <laughs> uh, 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 about a day or two later, and uh, he's now back home and doing well. Jeff, would you ever thought you'd see something like that? I, and that was on my birthday, January the 5th. I remember it well. And we uh, had a lot of media come up there to cover it because that's the first time we did a kidney transplant in Birmingham since 68. We were the first to do it in the state of Alabama, any transplant uh, at the VA. And we went in there with all the media and all this hoopla, and he was determined just to sit there and watch Rawhide. And his <laughs> wife and him both cried. You know, they were so thankful yeah. that they could come again and get this done and really change that man's we life. we got to go pay some bills. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> And we're going to talk more with Jeff and Tom. It's very interesting. Be right back. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. We're talking to the director of the VA in Birmingham and the public affairs uh, 
We're talking to Tom Smith, the director, and uh, Jeff Hester, who's public affairs. And Tom, when we went to a commercial, we had, we didn't. We, I mentioned something about the women's clinic transition and all this stuff. We got a new clinic, or tell me about this. We do. We actually have two new clinics, two very large new clinics, both of them around 50,000 square feet. Well, the one in Huntsville was built, and uh, we occupied it in November, and we got a bunch of new services in that area. Uh, to include a women's health clinic up there in, in uh, Huntsville, which we did not have before. Right. Uh, but we have radiology, and of course we have our primary care, and we have some uh, uh, physical medicine rehab service, physical therapy, uh, occupational therapy up there as well. Beautiful new clinic up there. And we opened the uh, one in Birmingham uh, in uh, just a couple of months ago, uh, and they're almost fully occupied now. We still have uh, a couple of things to put in place there, but uh, everything's up and running. We've got pharmacy, we've got another women's health clinic there. For the first time, we've got mammography in one of our sites, mm -hmm. and that's in the Birmingham Clinic. Just down the street from the uh, Birmingham VA, our shuttle service runs back and forth taking our patients, but most, uh, most of the time, they can get out of their car right there in the new 2300 space parking garage, which is a wonderful facility. Actually, we get more applause for that than we do for the <laughs> clinic. Yeah, I've heard about uh, it. <laughs> but yeah, they can get right out of their, uh, their, their car in the garage, walk downstairs to their mm -hmm. appointment most of the time. The people that tell me the ooh and the ah and about what have how it is, how nice it is. I haven't been over it yet, but I, I, uh, I will be looking at that. And that was thinking about, you know, we've the transition from um, the VA hospitals in the 40s and 50s. I, I saw somewhere that when they first opened in the 40s, they were taking care of the World War II veteran who had five mm -hmm. issues. Then the Korean veterans came along when they had frostbite and a lot of things that they had, and it brought it up to like seven issues. Mm -hmm. Then the Vietnam veteran comes along. And they had 13 issues coming in. So, and they had this thing called woman. You was talking about the mammography. Mm -hmm, there was mm -hmm. nothing in the first VA hospitals built to take care of women. There was no women's clinics, no OB clinics, none of that stuff, there was nothing. And uh, I remember when Birmingham had its first, started bringing its first yeah. treatment in for, for yeah. women. And we're gonna have to do more of it in the out years because of the the more women that are serving now, so. Yeah, well, the, the number of women uh, veterans is, uh, that we're taking care of is expected to double over the next 10 wow. years. And the women veterans bring in their own special needs and requirements, and we wanna meet those needs and requirements. So uh, I think we're doing that. We actually have a certified uh, women's health uh, physician, clinician at every one of our clinics to include all of our community-based outpatient clinics. Well, you're so out in front of the curve. Let me tell you, I don't want this to be a curve, but the veteran of today, the veteran that we're getting back from the IED explosions, you know, the loss of uh, limbs and that kind of thing, is that a challenge on you guys uh, at the VA because you're dealing with it, you're handing a patient that don't have all their, their their limbs and that kind of thing. Is that going to, in the out years, is that going to be a, something you're going to Well, we're actually dealing with it now and have for several years. It, it is, it does bring its own special challenges. It is one of the signature injuries of the uh, global war on terror. Uh, but fortunately, uh, Congress has been very good to us with our budget and the technology that we have nowadays yeah. that, can, that, that can adapt itself to the prosthetic needs of our veterans is just phenomenal. And you've seen some of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we're able to, uh, with our prosthetics and our prosthetics resources, we're able to equip them with just about anything they need and continue that follow-up care with them. And of course, another signature injury is the mental health injuries. Yeah. Uh, that, that has been a, a severe challenge for us. But again, we've resourced that. We've added over 200 new mental health employees or, or pro professionals over the last several years and continue to add them. And yeah. we do all kinds of things for our, our the mental TBI health. The TBI thing, late, last month, March, I always do a TBI show here on you. And, and I have a young Marine comes in and they, they would never know they had TBI, but the things we talk out in the green room, three minutes, four minutes later, sitting here at this desk, they can't remember what we talked about. Exactly, so exactly. It, and it has a lot of effect. Now, another thing that I always talk about here, and I will at the end of the show is, I hate to, is we have a lot of suicides, and y'all don't have anything to do about that, but you do have uh, people over there that's been on my show that's talked about mm -hmm. suicide prevention and things like that, and that is, uh, people will ask me, what can we mm -hmm. do about it, mm -hmm. you know, but but let's they can get a good job when they come out, you know, and they don't become a loser. The last thing on their resume, Tom, was paid killer. You know, mm -hmm. not many of those jobs available out there. And so to we can, as a society, provide for these people coming back, we send them over and we three or four or five terms, uh, tours in uh, Afghanistan. Exactly. And a 23, 24 young man comes home, three or four kids, and he goes apply for a job, they are not. So 
when I came out of this pipe shops, cotton pills, stuff like that, but they don't have that now. So that, that's a sad thing. Y'all can't do anything about it, but uh, you well, got to we, hear we do, we do a pretty good job. I mean, our yeah. mental health services, you know, we have four suicide prevention mm -hmm. coordinators, and Melissa Evans is the one who leads that team up. Yeah. Now, I think it was Sarah who came on the Sarah show Campbell, before, Campbell, yeah. Robertson at Pendleton, the time. Yeah. But, yeah, Pendleton at the time. Yeah, and yeah. they get married and change that name. <laughs> but, yeah, they're outreaching to these individuals all the time. These individuals yeah. have easy access to them. If they can't get them, they've got the Veterans Crisis Line. We want to make sure we get them help when they need it, and we're able to get in touch with them very promptly. So we work very closely yeah. with them. It's Social just many media. of our veterans that that are out there have not gone to a VA medical center, so I would encourage them to get to a VA medical center when Absolutely. they need help or there for them, because I think a lot of times the veterans that do commit suicide have not been to a VA yeah. and don't have that resource, and then they might do something that could have been prevented if they would have touched base with one of our providers or been in the VA system, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing. We can't, we, we also got to, somehow we've got to, we don't have PSAs on television anymore. You know, no public service announcement. Right used to have to have them to have a TV station. You don't that's have great. to have them anymore. But if we had those where you could put announcements out there and hope you get to a, a spouse, you know, the spouse don't understand why her husband, like I said about the Marines, says, well, you forgot already? I just told you five minutes ago, and then they, they get, yeah, that's suspicious. You're forgetting on purpose, and they're really not. You know, it's uh, part of the TBI experience. Exactly. That, that and, and I think that uh, one of the, if I could send a message out to those veterans and those family members like that, the one thing I would say is don't neglect things when they happen, and don't be ashamed no. to step forward and say, hey, I need some help. Fortunately, in, in, in modern times, we're, we've gotten over the stigma mm -hmm. of, of the mental health issues, but uh, still, there's a certain reservation. So if I could say anything, I'd say get over that, get in, because we have the services that can help. We're not you. talking about the word crazy, but no. that's where the veteran, the macho thing, mm -hmm don't want to go in and admit. You hit it on the head. It's like, I don't want to let somebody think something going on in my head. I'm just going to hear stare at the wall. I'm going to have a, somebody cuts me off in traffic. I'm going to run them in the ditch, you know, and those kind of things. They don't realize that that's part of. And, and, and I got a shirt, got a patch on the back that says, all wounds are not visible. They just got that's to understand. Right. If they had a leg missing, people understand it, but they can't see what's going on in there. And they, they move to the back of the church and the thing. They get in trouble at the shopping at the uh, Walmart because they get angry, you know, and they don't understand what's going on. They don't like what's happening to themselves. So yeah, you're right. That is exactly. What am I missing here? Could we down to run out of time? Well, I tell you, we uh, we want to make sure that everyone knows. You know, every uh, quarter, every three months or so, we do a veterans town hall in the mm -hmm. community, and we like to invite the veterans to come in. We put information out to them, but mostly we listen to their concerns and issues. We're going to do another one. Uh, we usually do them in Birmingham, uh, but we also do them occasionally in Huntsville. And this next one, which we're going to do sometime in June, which we'll put that information out very shortly, is going to be in Huntsville. So we'll look forward. And actually, it'll be at our new uh, modern clinic up there. That's great well. because I get that letter, and you guys out there with American Legion, DAB, and all this stuff, I hope you make it. I, I haven't made any of them. I got the invite, but I felt like I, I need to have something to complain about if I go, and I, everything's so fine with me. But I appreciate y'all coming on here today. I, I really do can. because it's been a while getting back. And will you not make it so long next time? We will not do that. I, will not I left a lot of stuff here I need to talk about. <laughs> well, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, <laughs> I too. I know it. So, so that's we're looking stuff. forward to it, Ken. We'll I got you right there on camera saying you'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I like Arnold Schwartz. I'll be bald. <laughs> we got to go to a break. Come back. I've got news that you can use. Stay where you are. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. Appreciate uh, the director of the VA coming in today and Jeff and talking about things. I hope you got something out of that. I know I did and uh, he's promised to be back. So if you've got questions for the director, like I asked you before, just uh, give me a call, contact me here with my information's on the screen. Uh, you can contact me and I will uh, be sure and get that information to them. And if something, you got a question about the VA that uh, you in between time, between you come back, give me a contact at that same information and I'll uh, contact Jeff or uh, um, we'll get we'll get the answer for you. Now, it, as we talked about about the new clinic and everything, it, every week I put this out there to you. Twenty four fifteen Seventh Seventh Avenue South. Twenty four fifteen Seventh Avenue South. Put that in your GPS because every week somebody called me and they're on the road and they say, "What's that address over there?" And I have to go look it up. But now I think I got it remembered. So, anyhow, now on the thirteenth of May, we're going to dedicate the uh, Alabama Law Enforcement Memorial up in Centennial Park. Centennial Park on 17th and Quintard. And um, we're gonna, that's at 12 o'clock, that's noon. 
for you Marines, a little hand on <laughs> one, big hand on 12. Uh, no, that would be wrong. I, see, I'm in the Army, and it'd be the opposite of that. But anyhow, 12 o'clock noon, we're going to unveil the Law Enforcement Memorial up there in the uh, 533 names, I believe it is, that, that was killed in the line of duty. Now, the way we built that is the uh, law, the tag. I wish we had it, we could post it so you look at it. Uh, the law enforcement tag that we have uh, for sale out there, when you go get your tag, when you purchase that tag, you uh, uh, proceeds from that tag is what's going to build this law enforcement memorial. And there it is. That's what happens when Kizzy Gooden goes to work. Anyhow, that's our tag. And that tag tells everyone that you care. That, is, that symbol with that shield in the rose is the national symbol for the fallen, those that have died in the line of duty. So if you've got that on the back of your car, and that tag goes with every color vehicle, and if you've got that on the back of your, uh, uh, the bag of your, the back of, <laughs> if you've got that on the back of your car and someone comes up behind you, they know that you support law enforcement. So I'm not saying that if a law enforcement person comes up behind you, it's going to give you a break for if you're violating the law, but it's going to tell them that that person in that vehicle supports the fallen. Now, we're back to the 287 bill that I talked to you about. Uh, our Senator Dale Marsh wrapped the gavel, would not allow debate, and allowed that bill to pass that will take the money from the veterans and give it to the prisoners. So now we have that situation happening. And as you read, watch this show, the House will be deciding what they're going to do and if it passes the house and i'm sure it will the governor will sign it and uh, 800 million dollars worth of prisons are going to be built on the back of the veterans so but they said if they take our money they'll pay it back they said if they take the veterans money they're going to pay it back can i see a show of hands out there in the audience that believe that we'll get that money back i didn't think so so the house bill 313 by representative klaus is going through and uh, if you see, I'm going to post the names on Facebook. So if you're on my Facebook, I'll put the names on the people up there that vote against veterans, and you'll have a chance to talk to them when it comes election time. So if you happen to see any of your senators or your representatives out and about, ask them why they prefer convicts over veterans, and let me know what they say, please. And uh, let's see. We still need some volunteers to drive the DAV van. Uh, to Birmingham, it takes the veterans over there. Give me a call and contact me, and I will put you in touch with the person who handles that program. That's uh, very rewarding for yourself if you'll do that. Uh, get that DD-214 to know where it is. You got to have it. DD-214, make sure you got it. Okay, um, this week's loot goes out to all those who provide health care for our veterans, and that's not just at the Birmingham VA. But all those places, like our great clinic here in Oxford, and he's talking about in Huntsville, Sylacauga, or whatever, Childersburg, and uh, all the other places they provide it. And thank you to them for the great work they do. We'll see you next week here on Veterans Issues. We're out of here.